Welcome to the Featured Anime Podcast. I'm your host, Jack. And I'm Rick. And today we are talking about Garakawa Restore the World, which was Rick's choice. Yes, yes, it was. It was my choice on a whim, and I am learning to trust my whims. My whimsy, if you will. No, never trust those. This was a good one. Sometimes they are. <laughs> Usually not so much. Usually not so much. <laughs> a blind squirrel finds his nut and a broken clock is right twice a day. Unless it's still functioning, mildly. Uh, but still. Unless it's um, a 24-hour clock, then it's only right once a day. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. That said, this is my one right time. Fair enough. So, But before that, we were talking about uh, quantum physics, believe it or not, talking about how <laughs> thoughts change the molecular structure of water and how depressing a uh, music video how depressing music video is and how depressing math can be if you look at it in a particular light. So if you want to catch a part of that wider conversation, uh, become a patron at patreon.com slash featured anime podcast and a dollar a month will actually get you there. So this week's choice was a movie and it aired January, 2016. Uh, producer for it was Pony Canyon and the studio for it was a one pictures. It is an original and its genre is sci-fi, and it ran for about an hour and six minutes. That's with credits. Yeah, with credits. So, I mean, watch time is about uh, an hour, hour and maybe four minutes, two, an hour and two minutes, something like that. Yeah. There is no after, there's no after the movie scene. So, after credit scene, sorry. Right. And... Honestly, I wasn't disappointed in this, despite the fact that it was only an hour long and you can just technically call it a uh, special. I wasn't disappointed in it. I was actually very happy with it. Me too. I <laughs> It hit all the points I liked. Um, I, I hate you for this with a fiery passion. Um, but after your lie in April, I noticed music way more and I seek out good music in anime and this while not focused on music music had a very big part and a good portion of music played a good part in this it did and while because i, I started noticing the music being played because the, the piano is a is a plot device that moves everything forward the absence of music was also very refined and powerful here too yeah and even though it was short, most of it, I would say, served a real solid purpose. In fact, I would say pretty much all of it. There wasn't really much in the way of fillers. And if there were anything that you can kind of chalk up to being a filler, it was there for a reason to kind of help convey the reality or the expectations. Yeah, this was a very, in terms of filler, this was a very tight film. This was a very... No nonsense. They're not going for time. They're going for content. Yeah. So I, yeah, it was, it's a, it's a format that I respect and it's a format that I really enjoyed. You got a lot of information over the course of a relatively short amount of time, considering how long movies <laughs> can be and have been and the attention to detail and the, the, the flow, this director, I, I, I don't think I recognize the name, but the director of this, especially since it was a, a original work, uh, did a phenomenal job, just straight phenomenal. Um, there's a few little extra scenes that you could watch along with it on Crunchyroll where we watched this. Um, I watched one or two, and the only thing I really got out of it was like a Q&A from the director. And it was interesting to say, see, one of the things that he said was the most important part of the job of a director is to make sure the dialogue fits the scenario. And yeah, I never thought of it before he, before I read it and, and cause it was subtitled. Um, uh, I never considered that before where a wrong phrase or a wrong word could totally disrupt the flow of a scene. And it makes perfect sense because if you look at the dialogue, you look at the show, you look at the scenario they're in while, yes, sometimes it's a bit cartoonish, I mean, it is an anime after all, it, it was not out of place, and it felt like something someone would normally say. Yeah. So, well, just job well done is, is, the, is the simplest way I could put it. 
this is going to score. It's not a 10. No, but it's not. It, 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 I'd say it, it's going to rank high for me because okay. the rewatch value, I think rewatching it would, would be good. I think that the duality it shows, the message that it sends is it's enough to warrant at least one more go through one more pass through, you know? Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. And, and I kind of agree with you on that, that it's definitely worth a second watch. And it's also a very unique story in terms of how it sets up. And it's also in how it progresses and how it came through. So you basically you're, you're starting off with a little girl or what, with what you would assume to be a little girl picking up what's considered a flower or what, what you can see as a flower. And then all of a sudden these eyeballs appear and attack her. And then that's it. And, and then you, you're viewing that same little girl playing the piano and being called away by grandma, and then you flash forward another 10 years or whatever, so it's taking place in the future, and you're learning about these this uh, uh, this uh, iOS, this uh, system, OS. The operating, iOS. Yeah, Violet iOS, or Violet Operating System. And then you have this executable, computable, executable program called Mother. And... You don't know the details behind those two or the significance behind them both until the very end, which I thought was really well done. I thought it was great. It, it showed you both of them. It gave you kind of like, well, these there's, there's some kind of sig- significance behind them telling us this. And everything that's being done leads all the way up to the very end. And all you know is or all you're being told is the two two main characters, Dorothy and Duel, are, I'm going to use air quotes, antivirus programs, and then they're introduced to another person or program that they don't know anything about that's not even being registered as anything but a, a foreign program that they can't delete, Remo, which yeah. we were talking a little bit, beforehand in the pre-content about what that made me uh, reminded me of. Yeah. Now, have you, have you ever heard of, and I, I've tried to say this so many times and I finally looked it up and I finally got the words right to find exactly what I'm looking for. But have you ever heard of Chekhov's gun? No, it's basically, so Chekhov's gun uh, in film specifically is if the camera pans over and sees an item For instance, Chekhov's gun. You see a gun somewhere in the scene. By five scenes later, you need to have incorporated that particular gun into the scene. Otherwise, it's a wasted prop. It's wasted resources. It's 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 unused potential. And in other films, we've seen unused potential plot holes, if you will, where they're like, "This is a super Deus, you know, Deus ex machina." type of situation that can save you, but they completely disregard that. And it's almost like the writer forgot about that. You know what I mean? Or the, the, they introduce somebody you think might be important and then never talk about them again because they forgot. Um, that didn't happen in here at all. No, not at all. And everything that was introduced here was introduced for a reason or it came back for a reason. And that's exactly what I really enjoyed about this is, there was nothing wasted. Everything in here was for a reason, and it it progressed to that point. And while what when you're watching it, at some points it doesn't really make sense why they're showing it to you, why what's happening is happening, or 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 anything else. It does it comes back. Yeah, it does come back, and it does answer those questions. It does answer all those questions that they that that you're gonna have. And it nicely rounds it up, kind of. Well, for I would say 90% of it, 99% of it is resolved by the end. It's just not necessarily resolved in the fashion that I would prefer. It's it, very bleak. It very... is, which is understandable. I mean, not everything can be sunshine and roses. No, but 90% of this show takes place in the virtual world, in the what do they call it? The box of Eden or something like that? Box of wisdom. Box of wisdom. And your viruses reminded me of the two virus, the antiviruses I like. Um, I think uh, Kaspersky and Nod 32. And I was like, if those were, 
two programs that could run side by side rather than attacking one another. Um, <laughs> if you've ever installed them both, you'd understand what I'm talking about because it'll bring your computer to a standstill because they both think they're, they're trying to protect you from each other. Um, but it, it reminded me of them fighting one another. And I thought it was kind of funny. And then you have a third unknown brought in and it's, it's funny because they mentioned this could be a Trojan. This person holding this flower could be a Trojan. And then they do a scan. No, it's not a Trojan. They do another scan. You're fine. They do another scan. Oh, you're fine. So like they're, this is not a virus. And it comes back to the end where it, it re remote technically is not a Trojan. No, except, except for the fact that she technically it's a new, is at the same time. Yeah. yeah. I, was I like, mean, it, she's a, she's an operating system that has been in the background for so long that it worked itself into the program by changing the rules. Thus, yes, becoming something that is considered a Trojan. Yeah. But because that Brimo changed the rules, technically they could not see her as such. And it's not that she changed the rules a little bit. She kept changing the rules and little by little until it was completely different from what they originally saw. Exactly. And what's interesting is the character, the main characters, Duel and Dorothy, they were every, the only time they ever went to sleep was to get upgrades only to find out those aren't upgrades that they're getting. They're actually downgrades. No, they are upgrades, but they're upgrades that mother wanted. They had to downgrade before mother was introduced in order to realize that mother was the problem. Yeah, but which is why I'm saying that they're actually downgrades. It's because they're being reprogrammed and repurposed for a lesser purpose other than what they were originally intent for. Fair. That makes sense because when they downgraded, a major downgrade, as it was said, they seemed much more powerful. Right. They also wore a lot less clothing. So I mean, like, I mean, with if, every upgrade or change, they their clothing changed too. So no, I, I get that, but I was also when I saw that I was brought back to the MMORPGs where like the max level armor is usually like a bikini. So yeah, like I can't really justify like, well, this max level armor actually draws any and all damage to itself. So yeah, it's like a, a like a black hole to the. Like hold to the, the bra. sun. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it was, that being said, it was still beautifully told. And it's not like it was completely surprised. Like, surprise, here's this big monumental thing that you have no idea about. You kind of, it, it was led up to it and it kind of hinted at it. And it hinted, it hinted, but it did not tell you again, Chekhov's gun, everything that you could piece together yourself. If you're smarter than me, as you are, you probably figured it out. And, you know, halfway through, it took me three quarters of the way to figure out what was going on and, and stuff like that. But Chekhov's gun, I, 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 yeah, no, happy I, I remembered I, the name of it. There you go. Uh, but <laughs> this, the whole overall sh- movie didn't waste time, and that's one of the things I really enjoyed. And I also loved that they how they integrated the music. It wasn't just like yeah. it wasn't just placed there haphazardly. It was integrated in such a way that it was organic. So yeah, you didn't have music just randomly playing for no reason whatsoever when it was trying to be a focal point, and when it needed to be in the background, it was in the background. But it was done beautifully, so, and it was a part of the whole experience. And honestly, that's what this was. Even though it was so short, it was an experience. And the artwork, the animation, I thought was really well done. It was beautiful. Surprisingly. I, yeah, the colors were extremely vibrant. There were very few, if any, because I didn't see any, blurred lines. There were no obvious hey, they really should have paid attention more to this fight scene. And the way that they did things was very consistent. The attacks for each character, when they bumped into one another, it looked good. Like I paused it a few times and it looked legitimately good because before they bumped into each other, they they would hit a barrier of sorts. And the barrier of sorts 
it was a perfect counter. It was a perfect, we need to draw this stuff here. It, it was a very, there was no like, let me punch your face and your jaw goes one way, your eye goes the other. It was, hey, we're programs. We we live in this box, this hit box, so to speak. You cannot come into my hit box. You cannot do that over there. Yeah. And they also described it in three different levels as well. And they also broke down what each of the levels were for. Yeah. Like they, they don't, the movie is really good about not leaving you wondering. They even covered bases. They didn't have to such as time dilation, whereas time moves differently on each level. And they gave a reason for what they were doing. They gave a reason why this person would disappear and go here. The only thing they really didn't give a reason for, which I really didn't mind all that much is why there was a labyrinth underneath their house. Uh, labyrinth. Well, magic. I just assumed that it was just instead of them blipping to level one, two, and three, I figured that was more like a staircase to level the level beneath where they were at. Well, they didn't really need a staircase or anything else along those lines. They could just open up a portal, walk through it, and then there, there they are. The building more so was being built because of Remo and what she wanted and what she was dreaming about or what she craved okay. or, or anything else. Because That case, makes sense. If you didn't notice, whenever she went to sleep and she woke up and she wanted to do something or have a craving or or she wanted to have this particular type of experience, that part of the house came into existence. Oh, I didn't see that. So that for, not, for example, I mean, I saw it obviously, but it didn't make, it, it didn't occur to me that it was out of the norm. Yeah. So Which she, is, when she went to, if you notice when they first went there and Remo was passed out, there was nothing there, just some grass. And then she woke up and an inf- a st- structure of a house started appearing, had some pillars, but that's about it. Time went on and they went into the third level where they were basically reliving human experiences that were recorded in the box of wisdom because that's what it was for. It was basically a hologram or a artificial area, holodeck, if you will to re-encounter or or relive those moments of life. And it's not their moments of life that they're reliving. It's in ge- it's a snapshot of life that's automatically fed into this into this system that spontaneously comes to life at that instance. And that's how they explained it. Yeah. But after she ate some food and she explained, well, if you think it'll be good, it will be good or you can imagine it and it'll be that way. They went to sleep. She wakes up. And when she wakes up, a new part of the house emerges because she wanted to cook some food. She wanted to make food with them and, and have fun and, and have an area where they can eat a meal together. I did not notice that, but you're right. Again, like subtle genius, subtle, well-developed, on point, everything. Like It was good. It was highly recommendable. I don't really have too much... Unfortunately, beyond to say that because it was so short, but it was without giving too much away. I really would like for you guys to watch it because it's good. It was. It was actually really good. And and it's short enough that it won't kill your day. Yeah, you can put it on when you're getting ready to go to sleep, actually, and enjoy the enjoy the video. I, I don't think I'd put it on as you go to sleep I, I because it, in my opinion, would catch you and make you want to finish it. You know what I mean? Well, I think it would point. draw you like in. When you're getting ready to go to bed, you want to do something to wind down. You just watch a movie and enjoy oh. it. Relax. Yeah, I, oh, I, man, that was a great movie. Uh, pass out. Okay, I can see that. I, I never have that opportunity. It's usually like, let me turn something. Dude, you you <laughs> hop in the shower and you're like, oh, this shower says. You should try it. It's it's amazing. Dude, it is I just wonderful. don't understand is, it, why you can stand up, taking a shower and sleep at the same time. It's a talent. It is. It's, I, I was tested for narcolepsy. I don't have it. I just have a, as my mother would say, a clear conscience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. You're being serious. Uh, yeah. No, see, what I used to do, like in <laughs> high school to make sure I was on time, I would turn the water on as hot as it would go, and I would spray the walls for maybe 20 seconds and spray the tub for about 10 15 seconds, warm up the area I was going to lay essentially, and then turn on the water to the desired temperature. Let it hit me, 
pass out, wake up when it got cold, because that was about 20 minutes, not the best way to do things. I would probably preface that, but I was on time. You got to live within your means as far as time constraints go. And ever since I stopped doing that, I've been late everywhere. So I'm just saying. Well, you run on Rick time. I'm just saying. You've always ran on Rick time. If I had a hot shower that turned cold, I'd be on time. It's not my fault that everyone decided they want forever hot water. And it just, it it messed up my timeline. I don't know what to tell you, man. I just, it's not my fault. Yeah, it is. It's it's not my fault. It's 100% your fault. (laughs) It's the water heater doing its job too well, okay? All right. All right. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll let you have that. That's all right. It's okay. Well, no, I, I, I'd like to preface that with, you know, people should definitely take charge of their own faults and, and timing has never been my strong suit. Um, it's never been a suit I'd like to wear if I'm being honest, but yeah, no, I definitely should, uh, improve that. I mean, we know this from recording for instance, you know, <laughs> yeah. 10 PM on the dot <laughs> it is usually around 1135 roughly. Usually, yeah, but that's all right. So, I mean, one of these days, well, Rick time will be on time. But the, until then. Only, I was going to say, when that happens, it's because I'm behind by one full day. That's Again, right. broken clock. Broken clock's right at least well, once a day and using your logic. But yeah, if I, if I <laughs> fall behind by one full day, we'll be right there. It'll be like Sunday, 10 p.m. Not a problem. Monday, 10 p.m. So Roll. We're getting it done. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> It'll be done. <laughs> oh, goodness. But yeah, no, going back to this, I highly recommend it. It is, it's a good, it's, it's a surprise. I would call it a sleeper movie because it's not something I've heard about before. Right. It's not something I've, I've looked at. And again, I just looked up movies. The artwork looks decent on the cover and it, it really was. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, given the studio for it i'm honestly not surprised i didn't know anything about the studio i just went i like the colors let's watch that one no i'm saying like with how good it is <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm not surprised uh a you know, a1 studio is you know since we talked about music and your lie in april they actually worked on your lie in april you're joking no i'm serious oh that's awesome yeah they also is- they also worked on uh several other Good anime, I would, I personally would say good anime, or at least co, co worked on a lot of good uh, other animes, some of which okay. I'm a fan. Of, uh, Gate, like Gate stands, or or because Gate was a good one. Yeah, that, that's the one with the with the military and the otherworldly stuff, right? Yep. Yeah, I would not mind rewatching that one. Uh, they worked on Blend S. They worked on Seven Deadly Sins. They worked on. Wow. Hey, have we done Seven Deadly Sins yet? No, we have not. We definitely should. One day. Someday. They have multiple Soon. seasons. Yeah, I know they do. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> they also d- worked on uh, Sword Art Online and Sword Art Online 2. Did they do Gun Gale? Uh, that's a great question. I don't believe so. I think someone else did Gun Gale. Understandable. So, anyway, I think... Uh, I mean, aside from giving away everything, I don't really know there's too much that left. we could talk about. Yeah. yeah. So on a scale. Oh, speaking of really quick, uh, how I was talking about the, the anime music video shelter and the, yeah, yeah they also worked on that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, to, to your point, this is a great spot to go with the rating. So on a scale of up to 10, sir, how would you rate this? Well, as a standalone, because I really don't have any, I'm, it's a nine, nine for me. It's not a 10. It could have been a little bit better if it was a little bit longer, but I liked everything about it beside the length. I, I feel like a movie should really be a, like an hour, 20 hour, hour, 25, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I'm going to give it a solid nine. Okay. And you, uh, I'm actually going to agree with you on that. I give it a solid nine. Oh, and your the, reasoning, uh, the reason because it's great it's the music was wonderful everything about it was just beautifully done i just didn't really care for the ending it just kind of left me wanting the ending didn't feel satisfactory i agree with that the ending was much more <laughs> open ended for lack of a better term to say the least yeah so no i mean so 9's pretty solid still considering what we normally 
how harsh we normally are, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm not, I'm well, not disappointed I'm not. in it. So, yeah. yeah. Well, next week I, yep. is my choice. Indeed it is. Uh, next week's choice is going to be a movie, and it's called King of Thorn. Uh, I'm not familiar. It's an action-adventure mystery, psychological sci-fi, and it came out in 2009. And it's, it runs for an hour and 50 minutes. <laughs> I mean, it qualifies for my timeline. So, you know, with that, I think uh, that's about it. I think think we're pretty much good. So if you enjoyed this week's choice, if you felt like we missed something, we didn't do it justice, we did it justice, or anything like that, feel free to reach out to us. Feature to anime podcast at gmail.com. At those anime guys on Twitter, featured anime podcast on Facebook. If you want to buy some merch and support us like that, you can reach out, uh, reach out to us or go to store.featuredanimepodcast.com. And if you want to support us by going to our Patreon, patreon.com slash featured anime podcast, a dollar a month will get you some bonus content at before every episode. We always talk and we usually do sometimes talk after each episode. Uh, would love to have you all be a part of that. And until next time, I'm Jack. I'm Rick, and hopefully we can be your antidote for boredom. (laughs) We'll see you next time.